let's look at an example of a more machine, right? A more finite state machine. So I want to make a clock speed divider, and I'll explain what that is in a couple seconds. But obviously, I want it to be a more machine, and I'm going to use D flip flops. D flip flops are just the easiest. Um, so we just always might as well just always use D flip flops. So the idea I have here is when our input is a zero, and we're going to call our input W, we want it to output a normal clock frequency. This is just going to be the standard frequency. But when our input is a one, when W equals one, we want our output frequency to be halved, right? We want the frequency to be divided by two. So just a quick sketch of what this might look like is we have our, when W equals zero, our output is this frequency, right? It's just an arbitrary, whatever the clock frequency is. But when W equals one, we want the period to be doubled or the frequency to be halved, right? So here it takes two clock pulses, and here it only does one clock pulse. So W kind of controls our clock frequency in a way. So something I like to do is when I make my state diagrams is I look at what would this system look like if W was stuck at zero, and what if it was stuck at one? So if it was stuck at zero, what we'd have here is we'd essentially have two states, right? And remember that this is a more machine, so the output is dependent on the state. So we put our outputs, right, zero, or Z in the state, right? Z is a zero here, Z is one there. So what this diagram is going to look like is W is always a zero, and we're just, since it's a clock, we're just going to be outputting a zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, indefinitely, because W is stuck at zero. And so it's just going to be, it's just going to output this pattern here, zero, one, zero, one. 0, 1, 0, 1. So, right, Z is just going to toggle in between 0 and 1. Now, let's consider the other case if W was stuck at a 1. If we want, we want Z to be, remember, we want the period of Z to be twice the period of, uh, of the input clock. So the way to do that is we're almost going to build in some delay states, right? So we're assuming that W is stuck at 1. And let's say we are starting at this transition here. So W is stuck at 1, and we're going to go, our output's going to be a 1, and then for the next clock cycle, the output's going to be a 1. Then for the next clock cycle, it's going to go to 0, 0. So instead of going one, or 0, 1, 0, 1, we're going to go 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. And in essence, that is going to give us this behavior right here. So now, we need to take these two concepts and put them together into a single design, right? So there's actually uh, there's a few ways that you could go about doing this, um, and and all of them are right, but I there's one that's a little bit more right. So let's let's look at this uh, first one I did, right? Where I kind of just took these two, and I guess you could almost say they're convolved together, but we don't want to use that word because that's not a very fun word. Uh, so I, I just kind of put them together, right? If, if we want to, uh, we have our, we have the, we have the provisions to have W equals one and go around like this, right? So we, we're always going to have to have that. But then we have, if W equals zero, then we just want to toggle in between 0 and 1. So that's what we got here, right? So this was kind of the first diagram put on top of the second diagram, right? And we had to copy it here because we also have this 0, 1 relationship. So that's kind of one stab or one way that we could draw the state diagram. There's another way we could do it where instead of, instead of it going between these two, like from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, there's also a way to get to the output of one by going across this way, right? So if we want to, if you want to get to an output of one, instead of going this way with a w equals zero, we can go this way. And so this is, so we've, if we imagine we're here and w equals zero, then we're going to toggle, right? So zero, one, zero, one. If we're at w equals one, then we're just going to keep on going around this way, and we have the original behavior we uh, determine. 
So here's the state diagram that I think is the most correct. And it doesn't quite, it, this one seems probably the, the least intuitive, but I would say it's the most correct. So we still have a relation where we have if w equals 1, we're just kind of going around these states. But if w is a 0, we, we, want, to, uh, we want to toggle in between 0 and 1, right? So we're going to have, let's just look at how I've got this drawn here. So if we're at 0, then 1, then 0, and then 1. And so right here, this is kind of, we're going to get caught in this loop here. And the reason why I do this is, the, the reason why I have it laid out like this, and, it, and granted, these state diagrams, it's kind of something you have to get practice with and just kind of sit down and think about. Um, so what what I did here is I made it so uh, the moment we're at kind of a spot here and uh, W goes to 1, we want it to transition and we want when it when it transitions to its 1, we want to always make sure that it's at the beginning of this delay sequence, right? So this is the beginning of the twice or the double long one right so if we start here that means that we're gonna have one for one clock cycle then one for another clock cycle two clock cycles in a row whereas in, in the other example like up here where we go we go from zero to one this this spot here is only going to be at a one for a single uh, clock pulse and we don't want that. We actually want it, we want to direct to here. So the moment we change to a one, it's going to be uh, two clock pulses. So this, anyway, these are all valid ways to do it. I would just say that this is more correct just because of the transition. Um, so if any of these other ones made more sense to you, that's that's completely fine. Anyway, I'm going to stick with this one though, and it shouldn't matter, right? The difficulty is getting your state diagram, and once you have your state diagram, the rest of this is just is just interpreting this and working off of it. So I'm going with state diagram three, and the next thing I need to do is make myself a, uh, a state transition table. And remember, these are just kind of questions, right? If I'm at state A and I get an input of zero, which state do I go to? So I look at my table and I say I'm at state A and I get an input of zero. And so here I've got an input of zero, I'm going to B. So I put a B there. If I get an input of one, I'm also going to B. And also my output, remember for a more machine, the output is just a function of the current state. So that means if I'm at state A, my output needs to be zero. So I just go through each one of these and, um, and just treat this as a, as a question. So say I'm at state C, what should my output be? Well, I've got C is a zero, so my output's a zero there. And if, uh, if say I get W equals one and I'm at state C, I've got an arrow saying I need to go to A, so I put an A there. So that's, that's the kind of procedure that you follow for this part. Now, remember, we can't just store A, B, C, D, these kind of abstract titles in flip-flops. Obviously if we encoded it to ASCII we could, but that's not really the way we want to go. So instead we want to assign some binary values to these labels. So we're going to need two flip-flops because we have four possible states and right so log two of four is two or another way of saying that is two to the power two to the power of two is four. So we need two flip-flops and so I'm going to just assign some values. I'm going to say A is 0, 0, B is 0, 1, C is 1, 0, and D is 1, 1. And so these are, when the flip-flops are at this state, say both the flip-flops are off, that means we're at state A. And so the next step we need to kind of do is take this table here, and instead of everywhere where we have an A, we replace it with 0, 0. Everywhere where we have a B, we replace it with 0, 1, so on and so forth. So this table and this table are, well, all these tables are very closely coupled. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to rearrange this so W 
has just one column, right? So I so I still have y two y one, but now w has its own column and it's zero one zero one. So you can kind of think of these three columns as the input. And we've got three outputs: y two, y one, and z. Z is the final output. Y two are outputs that are going to the uh, that are telling the flip flops what to change to on a clock pulse. So once again, this is just a reorganization of this data right here. And then, now that we have this, we can start making our K maps. So I, I like to go in order, right? So Y2 is the first one I'm going to do. And I'm just taking, right, my inputs, Y2, Y1, and W, Y2, Y1, and W, and just treating this as a truth table, right? Because it is a truth table. So for example, our first, our first input is 0 then 0, then 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. So we got 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Don't forget to label your uh, K maps properly, properly, otherwise this isn't uh, going to turn out right. Then we group it. Remember, we want to group the biggest possible groups of 1 as we can. And here we've got just this simplifies down to Y1. So we do that for uh, the next state, capital Y1 as well. And this one's a little bit more complex, but still nothing unobtainable. And then remember, for a more machine, z, our output, is just a function of our current state. So it's just a function of y2, y1. And so, so actually, you can go off of this table here. It's a little bit more simple, right? So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Those are all the possible configurations. So we just have this little two input uh, k map. And so here we find z equals y1. So actually, we've, we've actually found z equals y2, is capital Y2 as well. Um, and then the kind of last step that we can do here is we can put our two flip-flops on here. We're using d flip-flops, and our clock's just tied to a clock signal. And then we want to drive our d flip-flops with the expressions we found. So for example, uh, well, so if you look at y1, y1 is this kind of complex circuit. It's a function of y1 naught, w naught, y2 naught, y1 naught, y2 naught, w. And so I've just implemented it with this uh, sum of product circuit right here. And then y2 is just a function of y1, so we just took y1 and tapped it over here to this d flip flop input. And then z is also just y1, so we're just going to tap this and call it a z. So this is kind of the uh, completion or the culmination of our original idea of having a clock speed divider.